Come on and put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, give him all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. We worship you this morning. We glorify you, Lord. We lift you up, God. There is no God like you, Lord. None can be compared to you, Lord. You're altogether lovely. You're altogether wonderful. Come on, just lift up your hands and begin to worship the Lord in this house. He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. There is absolutely no one like him. No one can be compared to him. No one is like him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He is worthy of all praise and honor and glory and majesty and might and dominion be to our God who rules and reigns and lives forever. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We give your praise. We give your praise. Come on, put your hands together and Lord the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Give him praise and honor. I love to praise him because he's been so good. He's been so awesome. He's been so wonderful. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. It's a great honor and a privilege to be here this morning. I thank God for your pastor, Pastor um, Johnny. I hope I get that right. Uh, and his wife, um, they have been such a blessing to us so far uh, that I've been here. And thank you for welcoming me in this house. Also, I want to thank Pastor Jack, a good friend of mine, being a blessing. He's been to our Jamaica, amen, where God lives, amen. And he visits South Africa. <laughs> but we thank God for the ministry that he has um, been such a blessing to us. And we appreciate what God is doing in him, through him, in um, Johannesburg. And we believe that God has even greater things for him as he continues to obey God and to do his will. I want to bring you greetings from Montego Bay, Jamaica. Amen. Amen. And if you've never been to Jamaica, then you're not ready to go to heaven. Yeah, it's the next stop. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. But um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. I love South Africa. The first time I came here a couple of years ago, yeah, I felt like I came home. Amen. I, I love South Africa, and, and I thank God for what God is doing. And I believe that there's awesome things that God is going to do in this nation. Amen. Because the Bible tells me, the Bible tells me, as Habakkuk prophesied years ago, hundreds of years ago, he says, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And I found out one thing that there's not a dry spot under the sea. And that's why the Bible said the glory of God shall cover the earth. And I believe in these last days, in spite of what we're hearing, that the glory of God is filling the earth. And there's a call that is going forth to the believer and to the church of the living God that we must arise and shine. For our light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. And there is a rising of the glory of God. There's a rising of the splendor and the excellence and the weight of God on the earth. And I'm telling you, men and women are about to see an expression of God like we have never seen it before. Am I talking to somebody today? Yeah, we're going to see an expression because God will not, his word will not return unto him voice void. There is no way that the purposes and the plans of God will not come to pass. There's no way. He says heaven and earth will have to pass away first before his word is, I mean, come to null and void. God's word is coming and he says upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell 
will never be able to prevail against it. And I believe God is raising up some people in this last day who have the boldness of heaven, whose heart is set on, on the kingdom of God, and they know what, who they are, where they're going, what they need to do, and no gates of hell is going to stop them. They're not afraid of demons nor devil because they know they are sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus above every principalities and every power of darkness. Hallelujah. He's raising up a people. And so, and so t- today I humbly come before you because I believe that unless God speaks, nothing happens. Unless he moves, nothing will move. And I believe today that the, that the Holy Spirit is about to open to us and give us a deposit from heaven that will transform our lives forever. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I thank you today for it is all about you, Lord, and what you want to do and what you want to accomplish in this, in this place. Father, every person who have come here today, they will, Lord, I thank you that they will not leave here the same way they came in Jesus' name. But Lord, there will be transformation. For as we see you, Lord, we are changed from glory to glory. Let there be change. We position ourselves today to be changed by your word. For it's the entrance of thy word that brings light and understanding. Father, we thank you in this house for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them something good is about to happen to you. Come on, their neighbor didn't hear you. Shake them and tell them something good is about to happen to you. This morning, I want to share for a moment. I know we just celebrated the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. This morning, I want to talk about redemption. Redemption by the blood of Jesus. Redemption. I want to use as a, a core scriptures this morning from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. It says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. 1 Corinthians 1 And verse 30 tells us, it is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become to us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 It says, for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The word redemption means to ransom or to release or ransom to be set free. The word redeem means to buy, to purchase, to acquire. And in the context of the Bible, it speaks of buying one from a slave market or setting a slave free through a purchase. Throughout the scriptures, especially in the New Testament, we see this being referred to because of the act that Jesus did 2,000 years ago on the cross. He bought us from the slave market because we were enslaved 
to sin. He bought us. I want to say that again. He bought us. Buying is based on a couple of things. When you go to the market to buy something. When you buy, it's based on a, on a couple of things. First of all, the person who will buy something, he estimates that the product he's buying worth his purchase. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says we were bought out of the slave market. It simply means that the one who bought us thought it worthy enough to buy us. In Psalms 8 and verse 4 to 6, it says, and those of you who have the old King James Version, it says, what is man that God's mind is full of him? What is man that thou art mindful of him? That means God's mind is filled with me. Watch what it says. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Are human beings that you care about him? It gives me the idea that God, in essence, is preoccupied with this ultimate creation, man. And that's why David made it very clear in Psalm 139. He says, I'm fearfully and wonderful made. He says his thoughts towards me are precious. But, but not only that they are precious, these precious thoughts are more than the sands of the sea. And those of you who, who not, you, you don't live near the sea as I do, I mean, I'm four, only four minutes away from the beach. When you get there, I can guarantee you, if you sit there and try to count the sand, you will be counting. Your children will be counting. Your great-grandchildren will be counting. Your great-great-grandchildren will be counting. Because the sand is so numerous that it would take just a small part of the beach, generations, to count. And God says, my thoughts that are precious are more than the sands of the sea. Can you imagine? That's why David says in this psalm, what is man that God's man is so full of him? That is why the devil could not have the last laugh. That is why when sin became an interruption in God's plan, God did not leave us alone. Actually, at the beginning, he began to prophesy. He says, the seed of the woman shall crush your head, serpent. Are you listening to me? Because I created man in my own image. And in the image of God, created of God. He him. And that's why you and I have to understand that in essence, the devil is not really after you. He's after the image. Oh God. He wants to embarrass God. He wants to make sure that God does not win when it comes on to his dealing with man. But I want to tell you something. That God will never lose. He will never lose. And listen to what he says. You have made them a little lower than the angel. Actually, the original word is Elohim. He has made them a little lower than Elohim and crowned them and crowned them. And when you crown someone, you, you, it's a celebration. But not only that, but it speaks of their status. Are you listening to me? 
it speaks of the fact that they are now established in a place of authority. A place of authority. He says, I've crowned them, watch this, I've crowned them with glory. Everybody say glory. glory. Say it like you mean it, glory. glory. The word glory, the, the Hebrew word speaks of, watch this, it speaks of splendor. It speaks of weight. In Jamaica, when we say someone is weighty, when someone is weighty, it means that they have the resources. They have the finance. They have the financial power. Because I, I, I know today I could say, well, you know, I, I mean, since I come here, man, I've just fallen in love with all of you. All of you. And because I fall in love with all of you, before I leave here today, I'm going to write a check for you for one million U.S. dollar, each of you. You notice, you notice how, you notice how you never shout hallelujah? Did you notice that? Because you're kind of looking at me. He's a preacher. I haven't heard any stories about him. In our mind right now, he's not waiting. Oh, you're not hearing me. But put me aside. Bring Bill Gates here. And Bill Gates said, I love all you people. And I'm going to write a million dollar U.S. check for all of you. I'm going to tell you, they'll be shot all the way to the back. You know why? Because of his glory. Because of his weight. Because you heard something about him. You heard of his achievement. You heard how he was crowned with wealth. God says, this man, this man I created. He says, I crowned him with glory. And that's what the devil is after. He's after to strip you. For the enemy comes. Watch this. The enemy comes. John 10 verse 10. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. How many of you know that a thief doesn't come to your house if he knows you have nothing? The thief comes because he knows you have something of value. I said you got something of value. The thief doesn't come if he knows there's nothing of value. So the devil knows that there's something of value about you that he wants to steal from you and destroy you. Am I talking to anybody? You know why he, so, he hates you so much? You want to know? You know why he hates you so much? First of all, he hates you because you have a chance for glory and he doesn't. Nobody. My God. I said you have a chance for glory. You have a chance in such a way that God says to as many as receive him, to them he gives the right. He gives the right. To be sons of God. And sons of God has no gender. It's, um, in, in essence, it's male or female. Right? Are you listening? Sons of God. And sons of God <clears throat> means offspring. Offspring. He says, when you believe, you become an offspring of God. Offspring of God. That's why the Bible used the word born again. Anything that is born must be new, never been here before. But not only, how many of you ladies are, have children? Raise your hand, raise your hand. You got children. Let me ask you a question. When you were pregnant, what did you expect? What did you expect? You sure you didn't expect a goat? Or a cow? When you got pregnant, you were expecting someone that looks like you, that will operate like you, that will carry the same constituents like you have. So when the Bible says, except a man be born again, 
born again. That means when you come to an altar or wherever you, you were and you came to the, and you said, Lord Jesus, I accept you as Lord and Savior. God went on the birthing to stool. And he birthed you. He birthed you. He says you are not born of the flesh nor of man but you were born of God and anything that is born from any other thing carries the same constituency. That's why the devil hates you. Are you listening to me? That's why he hates you. Can you carry the life of God? You carry the nature of God. He knows your dominion. He knows what you possess. And that's why he want to lie to you. That you are not who God says you are. Anyway, let's, let's hurry on. So the buyer's estimation of the worth of the product is paramount in his mind when he's buying something. But not only that, but there must be a love for the product for you to spend a lot of money on it. How many of you know that when you love a product and you love something, man, you would, you would spend so much money. You wouldn't think of it. Like, like us men. You know, the ladies, they go to the shop and they, like my, my wife, they have to look at everything, you know, and they, they look at the price, they turn it around and look at the price. And, and I mean, I'm in the store with my wife and man, I get so tired. I just, I gotta sit down. <laughs> but the man, the man knows what he wants. He goes in and sometimes he doesn't even turn over the price. Nah. Whatever it is, he pays for it and he gets out of there. But when a man loves a product, and a man loves a product, he'll spend any money on it. Are you listening to me? It's amazing. I see people buying shoes, buying shoes for 600 US dollars. A shoe. <laughs> and the moment they step out of and put on the shoes, man, there might be some dog poo poo somewhere. <laughs> the buyer. Love the product. John 3 16 says, For God, oh God, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want to tell you the product that God breathed into, oh God, at the beginning called man. He has not left that product. He still loved that product. He wants the product to be in his place and position. But not only that, but the, the buyer must have a desire for the product. A desire for the product. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9 tells us, it says, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while. Same description as it is in Psalms. Chapter 8. A little lower crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God for whom and through whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says and he declares, I will declare your name among my brothers and sisters. 
in the assembly, I will sing the praises to him. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here I am. And the children God has given to me. God, Jesus, God's desire for us has not changed. And his desire was to take us from a sinful place. Oh God Almighty. That is why, watch this, that is why you got to understand that the Bible says angels are ministering spirits and they are, they are sent to minister or to those who have now been called and been raised to the place of sonship because of the redemptive work of Jesus. I want you to understand. That is why the Bible tells us in Ephesians, he says, now to the church, now to the church, the church shall show principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. What am, what am I getting at? I'm trying to tell you that even angels were never called sons. I said angels were never called sons because the, the place of sonship means that you have intimate access to the Father. Oh God. Sonship means that he has made you compatible to himself. Are you listening? That is why when Jesus declared, I am the son of God, they wanted to stone him. You know why? Because when you say son of God to the Jew, you're indicating that you're equal with God. And they said, you're blaspheming. When you say, watch this, when you say you are a son, a son of God. Are you listening to me? And here Jesus said, because of his work, he has now brought many sons oh God. to glory. Many sons to glory. That means I have a position of access that even angels don't have. For to which angel has he ever said, you are my son? So when he said the first, he said it first to Jesus, who is the firstborn of many. The firstborn. And the firstborn has the first rights. The firstborn has the place of exaltation. The first one is the leading one. Are you listening to me? And Jesus is the leading one. And guess what? You are right behind him. Are you listening to me? That's why the devil hates you. He hates the church because he says to as many as receive him, to them he gives the right, the right of access, the right of power, the right of dominion, the right to rule. That's why Jesus can say to you and to you and to you in Luke 10 and verse 19, he says, behold, I give you power over some powers. No, 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 no. All. Everybody say all. all. Say all again like you mean it. All. all the powers of the enemy. There's no demon, no devil, no prince, evil principalities, no power that can ever overcome you if you understand. Oh God. Your sonship and what this redemption did for you. That you're standing in a place that you can speak like God speak. And it is done. You can command. For you're a son. Come on, touch your neighbor and tell him you're a son. Come on, touch him and say you're a son. They didn't hear you yet. Shake them and say you're a son. You are a son. Let's hurry on because the chicken is about to burn on the stove. Let's hurry on. So, buying is based on a couple of things. 
the buyer's desire for the product. But not only, the buyer's past experience with the product. In Hebrews chapter 2 again, we go back to verse 14. It says, since the children have flesh and blood, he too share in their humanity. He too share in their, so that by his death, so by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death. That is the devil. Because the greatest thing that the enemy holds over anybody's life is fear. The Bible says we all our lifetime live in fear of death. And death means when you see, when we are cut off from God and have no fellowship with God, we really don't have life. Because whatever, watch this, whatever one is created from or comes out of, they need that same thing to survive. So when God wanted fish, he spoke to the water. Are you listening? And he says, fish, come. And there was an abundance of fish. But if you take fish out of where they came from, put them on dry ground, they can't survive. Oh, you know, this thing. They can't because they what? Came from water. They need water to survive. When God wanted plant, where did he speak? He speak to the ground. And he said, let all the trees come. And they, they came from the ground. Take a tree out of the ground. Take it out of the ground. Oh, God. It may be green for a little while, but it's going to dry up. You know why? Because it came from the ground. You need the ground to survive. When God wanted man, when God wanted man, he spoke to himself. Oh God, and said, let us make man in our image. And when he formed man on the ground, and he was lifeless, the Bible said, he, he breathed the essence of who he is. He breathed into man, and man became a living soul. Therefore, fish come from water. Plan come from the ground. Man came from God. And man cannot survive without God. Nobody not talking to me today. You can't survive. It is abnormal. Listen to me tonight. Today. It is abnormal to be a sinner. I said it's abnormal. For you were never created for sin. That's why you can't handle it. That's why you can't overcome it by yourself. That's why you can't defeat it by yourself. It is abnormal. I said it's abnormal. Watch here. So he says, I break the power because of his experience with a product. He became like them. He became like them. He could feel. And that's why he wanted to buy. Oh God. Because he said, I know your purpose. I know why God created you, my father created. I know that the position you're in, you are out of position. But I'm here to bring you back into position. So the buying is based on those four things. But not, not only that. The price of the goods is also based on a couple things. First of all, the price of the goods is set by the seller. It's the seller that sets the price. Those of you, I mean, I go to the market most of the time at home. When I'm home, I'm the one who goes to the supermarket. My wife doesn't go. I go to the supermarket, amen, I go to the supermarket, and I get everything, and I don't spend two hours. 
Oh, you get that tomorrow. I mean, I've got a strategy. So even if I don't take a list, and usually I don't, what I do, there's aisle 1 to 15. So all I do, I push my cart down every aisle, and I look at the products. You know, I go like this. And of course, any product that my home need, if I see it there, I pick it up. So I go from row to row to row. But the price is set by the supermarket. And most times, you can't go up the front and say, well, you know, this is not supposed to be the price you need to pay. I need to pay for that. Can you make some adjustments? And they will tell you, the price is the price. Watch this. Watch this. The seller, in essence, is God. Oh, yeah. Because he set the price. Oh, God Almighty. Listen, the price is without the shedding of blood. But not just any blood. Because you have to understand that all souls are God's. Oh, you're, you're looking at me funny. Well, let's read Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 18. I like them to put it. Ezekiel chapter 18. Let's, let's look at it. You can do the King James or New King James. 18 verse 4. He says, Behold. Everybody say behold. behold. All souls are what? Mine. All souls are what? Mine. So all souls are his. So he has a right then to sell. Because if you're selling a product that is not yours, there are a couple of things that is wrong. Either you stole it, or you're selling it on behalf of somebody else. But God says, all souls are mine. And the soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. For the wages of sin is what? Death. So if God says, any soul that sin will die. And every sin must be punished. God sets the law. Nobody's not talking to me. He sets the law. And God cannot break his word. For if he breaks his word, he would have to cancel himself. And God cannot cancel himself. For he already declared from everlasting to everlasting, I am God. So God is the seller and he sets the price. Oh, yeah, man. People in the past could not, watch this, could not pay the price because the blood had to be sinless. He sets the price. So Abraham couldn't do it. Isaac couldn't do it. Because they came from the seed, the fallen seed of Adam. And their blood is not sinless. And in the Old Testament, between the, 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 the mos, mosaic, I mean, from the beginning to the time of Jesus, there was a substitute they used. The goats and the bull. But that was not sufficient. You know why it wasn't sufficient? It's because the goats and the bull doesn't carry the DNA of men. You're not listening to me. Are you listening to me? It doesn't. It does not represent man. The blood of animals are of us one type, of, of one. But the blood of men is different from that of men. So that's why Jesus could not remain spirit. He had to become, put on flesh, partake of blood, that through his blood, through his blood, Redemption could come. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, All souls are mine. So God sets the price. And God says, It has to take sinless blood. So man's blood couldn't. And of course,
The devil could not make a purchase. <laughs> Nobody in the doctor. I said the devil could not make a purchase. One, he's spirit. Two, he doesn't have blood. Nobody's not talking to me. I said he doesn't have blood. So he, he was lingering around the, 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 the auction block. He was, but he could not, oh God, he could not do a purchase because he doesn't contain, he doesn't have that level. Watch this. That level and that kind of wealth in essence to purchase man. Are oh, you listening? Then what happened? God says, watch this. God says, because there was no one found. God says, I've got to come down and purchase it myself. So when the fullness of time came, God sent his son in the likeness of sinful men and became sin who knew no sin. Are oh, you listening to me? And paid the price with his blood, sinless blood. And all of a sudden, the man who was captured, the man who was enslaved, the price now is paid. God is now satisfied. You didn't hear what I said. I said God is now satisfied. And God says, I am purchasing this man. But I'm not just purchasing him and letting him go. Are you listening to me? I'm not purchasing him, let him go. I'm purchasing him and I'm taking him for my own. For you are not your own. You are bought with a price. Are you listening to me? I said you're not your own. And watch this. When he bought the product, he sealed the product. Seal means it must Remain tampered free until delivery. Nobody will talk to you. That's why Jesus said, the gates of hell shall never prevail. Oh God, amen. That's why the devil used fear, intimidation, lies, and deception. Because he knows that if you walk in the truth, there is no way he can have the advantage over you. There is no way he can hold you captive. There is no way that the enemy can ever overcome you and outwit you. I declare in the name of Jesus that if there's anyone here that is under the spell of the devil, I command you in the name of Jesus to be free. To be free. Watch this. Watch this. So he pay the price. God is satisfied. No, Jesus, no. It's not going to leave the product. Because there are some things, watch this. There are some things that he's going to make sure happens to the product. First of all, he says to the product, product you have redemption through my blood. But then he says, the forgiveness of sins. Watch this. The forgiveness of sins. The redemptive act. Secure for us. Forgiveness of sin. Of past wrongs. And make provision for future mistakes. Nobody's not talking to me. I said this redemptive work not only provides for you forgiveness of past sins past acts but it also provide for you for future how many of you since you're born again you never made a mistake let me see the hands any hands go up i'll cast out that devil in jesus mighty name are you listening that's why john provides this for us in first john 1 9 he says what if you confess your sins he's what and just what forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So what the devil wants to come to, to say to you and I many times. He said, hey, uh, he, he may have forgiven some of your sins. But not all of them. 
There are some things that have to haunt you for life. But the devil is a liar. Look at your neighbor and say, all my sins are gone. Come and tell them, all my sins are gone. The sins in the past, and if I should make mistake in the future, that is also covered under this transaction. Oh God, give him praise in this house. Give him praise in this. This price also provides for us as his purchase position deliverance and freedom from fear. Deliverance and freedom from fear. Because one of the strategy of the enemy is to make sure he brings fear. Fear. Fear will keep you captive although you are set free. He will captivate your mind. If you allow him, because right now, let me say this, right now, your greatest enemy is not the devil. All right. Let me come down here because some people didn't hear me yet. I said your greatest enemy is not the devil. I, I like to say it over here. The greatest enemy is not the devil. Your greatest enemy is an unrenewed mind. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are controlled by your dominant thought. That's why Paul says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the removing of your mind. No, the renewing of your mind. Therefore, it tells me that although my spirit is made brand new, yes. my soul needs saving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. That's why Peter says, Peter said, take the engrafted word which is able to save your soul, which composed of your mind, your intellect, and your will, that it still can be influenced by the powers of darkness. And God says, I want you to renew your mind. Begin to think like me. Begin to operate like me. For my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And my ways than your ways. And if his way is higher, my way is lower. If I want higher ways, I have to embrace his way. And the word of the living God is what changed our thinking. As, uh, oh God, as one preacher said, it's a word that will change your stinking thinking. And the enemy will work on your mind. He will work on your mind. He will make sure that the thoughts of yesterday, the mistakes of yesterday, oh God, he wants to haunt you. Because when it does, it limits you. Anything that you want to become in this realm, your mind has to be re renewed for it. Are yes, oh, you listening to me? Yes, and that's why many people in the church struggle. And it's not because of Satan. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, yes. It's because of an unrenewed. What he did, he does, he attaches himself to that which is unrenewed. And he enforces it. Oh God. Because many maladies, many things that happen in, with people even in Christendom is demonic or demonization. Because he can't possess you, but he can demonize you. Oh God. He can sow thoughts. Oh God. And limit you. And hold you down. And not because you're saved. That doesn't mean you will have... Oh God, you will enjoy the things that God has for you. Oh, you're not. You can be born again and still don't enjoy the things that God has for you. It takes a renewed mind and understanding because the Bible said the entrance, the entrance of thy word brings light and light is understanding. No, no. What you don't understand, you can't apply. I said, you can't apply what you don't understand. And therefore, what here? The enemy 
wants to defeat you. And that's why Bible study is the least attended service. Are you listening? Because he wants to make sure there's no entrance of light. That light doesn't come to you. Because when light comes to you, you can see clearly now. You can see where to go, how to operate, what to do, when to do it, with whom to do it. Oh, God Almighty. The devil can't outwit you when you walk in understanding and light. My people, my people are destroyed. My people are destroyed for lack. Not lack of hallelujahs. Not lack of praise the Lord. Not lack of singing some of the best worship songs. He says they destroy because knowledge. The knowledge that comes from the word. And that's why every believer should soak themselves in the word. Don't let nobody tell you you're acting holier than anybody else. Get in the word because his word, his word, not one word shall fail. Not one, oh God Almighty, not one word shall fail. So when my little boy was born 10, almost 11 years ago, and after... After a while, we noticed that he wasn't doing the usual things like, like other children. And, um, and um, we waited a little bit more, you know, because sometimes you think, you know, they're kind of slow. They'll come on. And then after a year, a year and a half, two years, he was not doing the things. He wasn't walking. He wasn't talking. None of these things. So we brought him to the doctor. We brought him to the doctor. And we took him to the specialist. They did their, all the MRI and the scan and all those things. And they discovered, they discovered that in his brain, there is a gap. And the way the gap is, controlled speech and mobility. And the, and the doctor said to us, he will never really walk. He will never really talk. But what we can do for you, you, could, you can come to the therapy, you know, we, we'll see what will happen and we'll try. My wife and I, we walked out of that office. We sat on the, oh God Almighty, we sat in the car. We said, whose report will we do? I said, whose report will we believe? Are we going to believe the word of the living God? This God I have been preaching for years, since I was 14 years old. I mean, I mean, what about, and I, oh God Almighty, I brought him home. I had all the letters of, of referrals and all the things. I brought him and put the letters on my, my table, and I brought him home, and every morning, I would get up and anoint him. I said, you shall walk and you shall talk. Yes, oh, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I said, you shall walk, you shall talk. Because not one word of God shall fail. Not one. And he says, he was wounded for our transgression. Bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon. And with his tribe, we were here. Matthew 9, 17 says, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness in his own body. I said, you will walk? Ask him. Ask him. Man. Man. He is running. He is running. And I can't stop him from talking. Oh. I got to tell him sometime, be quiet. And then I have to remember that the doctor said he wouldn't talk. So sometimes I just sit down and let him talk and let him talk and, and let him talk. And, let, and I'm telling you, not only that, not only that, he has the IQ of a 21-year-old child. His ability to, an, to an, analyze. And I'm telling you, he's my encyclopedia when it comes to animals. Oh, you're not hearing me. This God and this word I'm talking about, this redemption that comes to us, there is nothing that the devil can throw at you that this redemption has not taken care of. Oh, am I talking to somebody? Galatians 3 verse 13 said, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. The curse of the law. The curse of the law. So when I was 11 years old, I had a swollen heart twice the normal size. They said I, I wouldn't pass my 16th birthday. But one night I went to a meeting mm, come on. with somebody who believed. I didn't want to go because I didn't like church. 
I thought church was boring. I thought, I mean, I, I would go to church with my parents, and, and by the time they get the sermon, I was fast asleep. But to cut a long story short, I, I went to that meeting with a friend, not because I, I, I wanted, because my friends were going. And I went there, and my heart started on me. And, I mean, my washing was cold, so I could hardly breathe. I knew I was dying. And I remember the preacher said, there are 10 people here. You run away from God. If you need healing, come up tonight. And I walked to that altar, and he prayed. I didn't feel any great thing over me. But that night, everything changed. The next day, I could run 1,500 meters. Are you telling me? Don't tell me that this redemptive act satisfied every malady of man's life. Are you listening to me? That's why Paul said, Christ has redeemed you, bought you back from every curse of the law. Are you listening to me? I don't care what necromancy anybody have worked over your family. I don't care what covenant has been made over you. Oh God, to stop your progress, to stop where you're going. I tell you, this covenant blood, this price that I be, has broken every covenant. Because any covenant that is made, oh God, with blood, that is not the blood of Jesus, takes blood to, to break. Nobody's not talking to me. That's why when you go to the, I don't know what you call them here, Guzuman or, or um, witch or Ansangoma or whatever. You notice every time you go, they got to be I mean, the shedding of a chicken blood or a goat blood. Because covenant is made by blood. Oh God. And every time covenant is made, every time covenant is made by blood, it becomes binding. That is why even if a parent go or a relative go that is over a house, they go and you don't go. Because they are over the house. They have not made a covenant both for themselves and their household. Oh, you don't believe me? That is why when God made a covenant with Abraham, it was not just Abraham alone. Yes, sir. It was everybody in his household and everybody that would come after him. Yes, sir. No. That's why the seed of Abraham yes. shall be blessed. That's why you are enjoying the blessing now yes. because you are the seed of Abraham. So every covenant that is made is not just made for that one person. It is made for everybody who is attached to that person. So when we dabble with, 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 with things, with, with, with covenant that is outside of the covenant of God, Amen. you need blood too. Amen. Not just prayers. Not just laying of hands. You need the application of the blood of Jesus. Are you listening? Here? I declare any covenant, any curse, Anything that have been made today over any life in this house, I declare that the blood of Jesus cancel every curse. And I declare over you, you are free. I said you are free in the name of Jesus. Every spirit that have been lurking around your house, lurking and sitting on your destiny, sitting on your progress, telling you can't make it, I declare in this house, it is broken by the blood of this new covenant. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, captives are set free, bondage are broken, sickness that is instigated by demonic power is broken today in the name of Jesus you are released I said you are released I said you are released in the, by the authority of scripture and by the the word of the living God the devil has no chance with the blood the devil has no chance with this covenant the No chance. No chance. So he has no right over your life. He has no right over your family. You have a covenant that not only affects you, but affects those. For the seed of the righteous shall be. 
in the name of Jesus. We clean up every bloodline. We clean up everything that have gone from generation to generation. We say today is the end of it. Today you will rise. Today you will prosper. Today you will break, break every cycle. Every cycle. Oh, can I talk to somebody? Can I? Because the spirit of the sovereign God is upon us. The spirit of the sovereign God. For he has authorized us, oh God, to set at liberty, at liberty, the captive. And the captive, the captive is one who is taken not by their own will. Because there are some things that have been passed down to you that you never you were not directly involved in but you are captured by it because you are off that line are you listening to me but i came here today to tell you that the doors are open walk out walk out walk out every captive walk out you are set free today you shall realize your dream today you shall begin to see your path clearer than you ever seen today is a day of new beginnings in your life for he will make ways in the wilderness rivers in the desert behold i do a new thing in your life because this transaction guarantees you that that's why you can boldly stand up and say no weapon that is formed not in my strength but because of my connection with this covenant with this blood this precious blood this holy blood this blood that that is on the altar of heaven this blood that caused jesus to intercede for me every day he backs me he talks about me oh god almighty he said that's my that's your son father that's your son and nothing that the enemy throws at him can overcome him because i paid the price and i come on praise him in this house praise him because the victory is yours praise him because we are not here to play church we are on divine business for God because the captive must be set free the purchase is not in vain and you have been purchased you have been purchased with a price and God says devil take your hands off it's not your property take your hands off devil take your hands i command him to take his hands off your finances take your hands off your family take your hands off your future take your hands off your investment take your hands off my body in the name of the lord jesus you have no right over me somebody's being set free right now somebody's being set free right now somebody's being set free right now hallelujah 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 ah yeah yeah i sense freedom in this house chains are broken you sang that this morning i'm telling you it's prophetic the chains are falling the chains are falling i said the chains are falling you're about to experience a level of freedom you have never god said some have been going around in circles 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 for years you've been going around in circles but god says it's time to move forward it's time to go forward for the chains are broken the rope is cut this is your time of release to go to the next dimension of your life the devil is a liar forgive me today forgive me of being so passionate but let me tell you something I know this power I know this power I'm telling you I know the power a couple years ago my wife and I was in Miami in Miami and she she we were going into a place and, uh, and uh, she was looking so there's the gate that runs on a piece of iron it's a kind of automatic gate but it runs on an iron and the gate was open and she did not see the iron and her, her foot went right into it broke 
all her toes here. I was picking bones out of her toes. A long story short. The doctor said you will, she will never walk again on that toilet. I said, devil, you're a liar. Jesus. You are a liar. You are a liar. Because God purchased the whole mess for my wife. She, I don't want no limping wife. Are you listening to me? I want my wife to have her good foot so she can preach when I'm not there. Are you listening to me? We lay our hands on her and we say, in the name of Jesus, you shall walk. No repercussion from this thing that happened to you. I declare wholeness over you in the name of Jesus. I said, she's walking, leaping, and praising God, defying every word of the enemy. I am telling you this, not because I want to look special. I look great and anointed. I want to tell you the reality of this purchase and what it affords you. There's nothing in your life if you will believe what he has done that cannot be changed. I declare there's change coming. That change is yours in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands to heaven and begin to praise him in this house. For God is doing a work in your life right now. You will not leave here the same way you came in Jesus' name. We want to pray. I like the singers to come back. Come and sing. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. I don't care where it seems like the enemy has constrained, have held you back. Probably it's in your business. For years it seems like you, it's just not moving everything you have done, everything you wanted. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Because you got to understand, you do not wrestle against flesh or blood. You believer, are you listening to me? And the enemy has assigned people, assigned demons, to make sure you don't progress. And when access is given through either mistakes or bad decisions, they take advantage of it to hold that thing captive. You do all the advertising. You do everything you need to do. But somehow, it's not taking off. I declare over your life today that that business is free today. Every demonic powers that have been assigned against it is now broken. I feel like I'm talking to somebody. In this, it's broken now. And the release they shall come from the east. They shall come from the west. They shall come from the north. In the name of Jesus. So I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains.
that area and stop. It's not movement. I try to move, but just sit back. Nothing is moving. I tell you today, God will release you. Today. I want to agree with you. Notice what I said. I want to agree with you. That anything that I've held you captive, in any year of your life, God is going to break it today. I want to take a few minutes. Just walk from where you are. If you're in that position, I will agree with you at this part. That today is a new day. If you're in that position, you say, I want you to agree with you. Concerning this issue in my life, this thing that I've been going on, around in circle, this habit that has held me for this long, I want the freedom to live. I want to come and try to reign. For I hear you with your chains. I hear the chains.
Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout offering in this place. Woo. Can, can we do that little part where it says, I speak Jesus over my family. And I speak Jesus over my, over my whatever that is. Come on, you can do this. I know you can. We can't see the, let's get this, get on the, wait, where is that? One? Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus. Shout Jesus yes. from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness.
Jesus over your family, over your children, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. That is not saying we can call them in right now in the name of Jesus. Do it. Open your mouth and say that in the name of Jesus. I speak Jesus over my son, over my daughter, over my siblings, over my sister, over my brother, over my parents, over those that are not saved. I speak Jesus over them for healing, for restoration, for bondage to be broken, for change to come off. I speak Jesus over my family. I speak Jesus over my family. I speak Jesus over my family. And we call them into the kingdom of God in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 And now, Father God, we thank you. We can see them saved. We can see them set free. We can see them delivered. We can see them walking into the kingdom of God. We see them being, being, being committing their lives to God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you for every salvation, every restoration, every healing, every chain that has been broken in this place this morning. Thank you for complete restoration, complete makeover that you have done this morning in this building, Father. We thank you, Father God, that we can declare that we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We are victorious. We are the head and not the tail. You have called us to reign and, 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 and walk in victory in every part of our lives. We thank you for that, Jesus. We are healed. We are healed. We are healed in the name of Jesus. We are healed in the name of Jesus. We are restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Can we give the Lord a great shout offering, clap offering? And then you may go back to your seats. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! What a service. What a word. Stay here. We're going to We're going to sing again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't have to ask you if you received the word this morning. I can see that you have received the word this morning. Hallelujah.